Good morning, Maroons all over the world. Maroons, particularly in Akompong. All the people of Jamaica and the world who have taken the time out to pay attention to what's happening in our beloved state since I've taken office over eight and a half months ago. I want to say thank you particularly uh, to those who have stayed um, with the cause and with the purpose and the mission and also those who have given me the kind words of support over uh, particularly the last two weeks um, where my administration and my governance has come under uh, severe uh, critic and attack um, attacks that I would say um, are aimed at destabilizing what we're trying to do and also um, bring to shame uh, our beloved state. Now, I would want to first start by talking on the topic of sovereignty. I've had several questions come at me, several uh, hosts from various interviews um, who have stated their point as it relates to maroons and sovereignty. Now, I'll say this once more because, to be honest, I won't be defending this. I wouldn't be coming on the air uh, every time trying to defend the argument of sovereignty. The Maroons are a sovereign people. The sovereignty is derived from the soil. For people to understand, let's take it back. The freedom of the soil, which is explained in the Maroon Treaty of 1738 between the British and the Maroons, unequivocally declares the territory of the cockpits being the, the territory or the domain of the Maroons. It speaks to the freedom of the people, which runs in perpetuity for the born and the unborn. Now, set aside the comments as to how are the Maroons sovereign. We've already explained our ancestors, the Arawaks and the Africans who partnered together to save this land from the invaders and defended it in fierce battle, which, we, which, which raged for 83 plus years. To the end that the Maroons have, al have always maintained their freedom and we've always maintained our lands that are tax free. We've always lived off our lands and continue to do so even in this current day. And I want to say that the government of Jamaica has been very good to the Maroons. And I want to take the opportunity to thank them for all that they have done in helping us. Because when the questions are asked, then how do you use the resources of Jamaica if you're sovereign? We keep, we keep getting beat down for the failures of the past. Now, the essence of where we are now is that the government have stepped in and they've assisted us on many fronts. I want to thank the Honorable Babsy Grange for her input in helping us to maintain and preserve our culture. We want to thank all the other government entities who have also stood beside the Maroons and helped us in the various areas of social welfare that we so desperately need. We are now in a time that young minds and young leaders have emerged. We see where the failures of others have hindered us and has put us in a position of question. Our identity has been lost and I've done nothing more than being an ambassador in holding my fiduciary duty to the people and to the state, to maintain our sovereignty, to reaffirm our people, and also to ensure that our inheritance remains intact and remains with us. Now, we haven't had any assertions that our lands would not be taken, mined, and totally devastated. We have seen the impact of mining 
and what it has caused to lands, to animals, to the biodiversity. And we do not want that here. Since coming in to office in February of this year, me and my administration have encountered, have encountered varying levels of opposition. And the opposition has stemmed from loyalists of the previous administration, owing to several irregularities which we would have found happening in our state. Now, I want to take this time out to say a special thanks to the Maroon Office of the Secret Service, which has been in operation for over the last five years. This team, which is led by Mr. Dennis Foster, David Holmes, who is the former Secretary of State, and Mr. Duncan Buchanan, have contributed a significant amount of information to the Office of the Chief, which have led to the recent revelations which I've put forward in regards to the happenings in a compound as it relates to the previous administration's operations in collusion with external forces to bring about what was being described as the official currency of the Maroon people, the Lumi. Now, let me say it and say it again for those who might not have heard. We totally distance ourselves from anything having to do with the Lumi, with Ferran Williams, and with Timothy McPherson, and also with Jan Marshalek, the world's most wanted man, who's wanted in the Europol division for crimes stemming from money laundering and misappropriation of funds, which we believe have come through some of our own state accounts to help construct a facility that was placed here to be the central solar reserve bank of a compound. Now, the challenges faced have ranged from total neglect, total disobedience of orders in um, matters concerning the citizens, particularly as it relates to the COVID crisis and the hosting of events and parties in the community. We've put protocols in place to manage events, meaning we formalized an approval process by which persons were invited to apply for an event permit within the space, within the territory. This fraction has totally totally chosen to refuse to work with what the people of the state had decided, promoters amongst themselves had decided, shop owners, bar operators had decided, which you would have seen me at an event and, and on a video a few weeks ago, bringing an, an, an end to an event in perhaps a heated manner because we take the safety of our citizens very, 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 very seriously. And we ask for the cooperation of everyone in the community because this is the home of everyone. But when external parties and people come into the territory, we do not know what they bring. Our elders have expressed their fears and their concerns. Many of them have chosen not to come to our town, town hall meetings because they do not want to be in a gathering. To that extent, I've had no choice but to lay firm on the decision and the request of my people, the Maroon people to bring order to the space. I thank those for, the, for, who, for those who have cooperated. And for those who haven't, I again ask you, let good sense prevail. 
We must be respectable to our neighbors. We must be respectable to our people. We must be respectable to the chief, who is the elected head of state. I have always operated with an open door policy. We're a state that have found ourselves very, very, very short on resources, particularly cash. I have found an account belonging to the state where almost one million US dollars have moved through that account within less than two years by the previous administration, particularly Mr. Ferran Williams and Mr. Timothy McPherson. None of us in this community can account for where that money went or how it was spent. What we know is that a building was built that was supposed to be a bank that we hear the previous colonel say was a gift to him, which has a personal bedroom for his sister. It is unfortunate that we have to go to the extent of airing our dirty laundry in the eyes of the public. But I've been left with no choice because of coming under severe attack from loyalists of said Ferran Williams. I've also had to take measures increasing my security for the level and extent of the nefarious acts committed and the parties involved, particularly the most wanted man in the world. I take this opportunity to again reassure people, to reassure the investors who have come on board, who have looked at us and have been happy that someone has actually stepped forward to be bold, bold enough to clean house of the mess that has been left behind. I want to reassure those investors and those also looking on, wanting to come here. Our community is a community of peace. It is a community of love. It is a community that is in desperate need of help, not only for its infrastructure, but for its people who have said on many platforms need healing. We would have heard a radio interview a few weeks ago where members of the so-called well so-called members of the community have aired their concerns of the governance type uh, and the governance system that uh, we have in place here in the village now let me also reassure all maroons that nothing has changed within the governance structure and system that we operate under our traditions remain intact, our culture remains intact, our council remains intact, and our executive body remains intact. The government is even more encouraged to push on amidst all the challenges we've overcome and the challenges we've encountered, encountered in the last couple of weeks. I wanna say that The many persons, groups, individuals, stakeholders that maintain their support for the Maroon people to continue to do so. Because my mission is just as I said, just as I said in the beginning, to bring back the pride, to bring back the dignity, establish identity and protect our lands. I want to touch back on the works of the Maroon Office of Secret Service and what they would have done to bring us to this juncture and state that Mr. Foster, who was recently incarcerated, I've done quite a bit of research on the circumstances surrounding Mr. Foster's incarceration and it is no surprise that I am now facing the situation that I am facing because those same forces would want the same fate for me as they would have accomplished for Mr. Foster 
who raised the alarm when Mr. Williams and Mr. McPherson begun establishing the so-called Bank of a Compound. Former Secretary of State David Holmes would have also aired his concerns and actually got into confrontations physical that got physical, I must say, got physical with the previous colonel, which is a quite unfortunate situation. Now, the work they did is the same work I am here doing. The media, I would hope, will continue to do their work and be as unbiased as they ought to be in covering not only one side of a story, but ensuring that the complete story is actually told. Our findings have been passed on to the law enforcement, the JCF and MOCA for the sake that the acts conducted by Mr. Ferran Williams and Mr. McPherson involved a financial institution within the confines of the Jamaican jurisdiction. These monies were moved from an account we hold in that jurisdiction and therefore requires the due diligence to ensure that the trust of the people of wider society is maintained to ensure that justice is served to the Maroon people. I go back to a conversation where we had at the Senate when I was invited to the Senate earlier this year, where a Speaker of the House, Senator Dalrymple, asked the question when we spoke on the argument of sovereignty, why weren't the Maroons able to secure any major investments to date? Well, one good reason I've just expressed, the fact that money can be siphoned from the state's account with no recourse, the fact that we can have the world's most wanted criminal tread into our territory without interference, and where money has been missing from our account to the tune of approximately one million US dollars. And this is only on the accounts that we've identified so far, mind you. That we're not able to have proper roads. We're not able to have proper, we're, we're not able to have running water. We're not able to have proper telecommunication services. I beg to say that the Maroons have been in total, have been operating in total dishonor for the sake that those who have gone before would have fell short of upholding their fiduciary duty and their seat and position as chief, as colonel, as head of state of this proud sovereign nation. And I'm here to fix that. I again urge everyone well-thinking minds and persons who hold the Maroon people dear to their heart. This is not a rogue state. This is a proud state. We're a proud people. And we have a dignity that we want to preserve. We want to ensure that our people, our elders, our children have the best support system to help their own development, safety, and security. That is my commitment to the Maroon people. 
and I again welcome with wide open arms the conversation that needs to be had with the external government to bring to an end all the nonsense that we have allowed to carry on. Let us begin to act in honor. Let us begin to work in fruitful partnerships. Let us put to rest the noise and the antics of the media. Let's bring peace to the space. Let's bring peace to the state. Let us together overcome the challenges we face. I thank you.